Charlie, I, I think that Mara, as she so often does, gets it exactly right, that when you talk to voters on the trail, you hear about this outsider status, which takes a certain chutzpah to have been president of the United States for four years and still consider yourself and position yourself as an outsider, and yet somehow he has succeeded in doing that. And to this question about strength, I think it is part of why you see Vice President Harris going after him on that exact uh, sure. element and also on this question of exhaustion. Listen to what she had to say today about this reporting that Trump is exhausted. I've been hearing reports that his team at least is saying he's suffering from exhaustion. And um, that's apparently the excuse for why he's not doing interviews. And of course, he's not doing the CNN town hall. Um, he refuses to do another debate. And, you know, look, being president of the United States is probably one of the hardest jobs in the world, and so we really do need to ask if he's exhausted being on the campaign trail, um, is he fit to do the job? And I think that's a question that is an open-ended question that he needs to answer. Charlie, who do you think that appeals to? Well, it appeals to voters who I think are, are you know, the very small segment of the electorate that hasn't made up its mind, but also, you know, to uh, many of these soft Republicans who might like some of the things that he's done in the past, but are now having doubts about all of this. Because, I mean, look, in a less insane political moment, um, candidates would try to put forth their best self, their most attractive uh, side. You know, I, I remember back in 2016, there's at least in the urban legend that Donald Trump um, sort of moderated his his approach in the in the weeks before that election. But what are we seeing right now? This is the most bizarre crazy, low energy, but also dangerous closing argument we've ever seen. Completely undisciplined. This is you know, what Donald Trump is presenting to voters 18 days before the election. And we, I think we need to keep two thoughts in our heads at the same time. Number one, we are seeing a, a completely incoherent um, you know, a guy who is clearly in some decline, um, a deeply unserious man, but also someone who is quite dangerous. At the same time that he can't put together a coherent thought, his campaign continues to push an agenda that I'm not sure that 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 every American has fully taken on board. You know, the idea of the mass deportations, the use of the military. So at one point you look at him and go, he's weak, he's old, he's decompensating in real time, but he's also genuinely dangerous because, as I've said before on this program, you know, a clown with a flamethrower still has a flamethrower. And I think that we need to keep that in mind as well. Well, Rev, I want you to take a listen to something um, President Bill Clinton had to say. This is in North Carolina yesterday. He was on the trail with Tim Walz. Take a listen. I don't know how many more elections I'll be involved with, and I'm too old to gild the lily. Heck, I'm only two months younger than Donald Trump. <laughs> Good news for you is I will not spend 30 minutes swaying back and forth to you. Uh, I've played enough music, I will not clap off beat. Nor will I pretend to be a conductor. Because we got a race to win. And we have to win it. Rev, President Clinton could be up there saying, hey, are my guys listening to me? Let's roll my favorite song, Don't Stop, by Fleetwood Mac. Everyone will love it and enjoy it. Age alone, as he said, he's only two months younger than Donald Trump. That's not a rationale for the behavior that we are seeing. And to Charlie's point, yes, he may be exhausted. Some of this may have to do with age, but the message undergirding, undergirding all of it is still as dangerous. The message is still as dangerous and more because he has gotten more uh, unhinged in terms of what he's advocating, what he's proposing uh, this time than even when we first saw him run in 16. What he is saying, what Project 2025 is, is documenting, which is really the policies of Donald Trump, is far more dangerous. And I think that what people should ask themselves is just four or five months ago, when none of that kind of behavior was uh, publicly demonstrated by Joe Biden, many people said he needs to get out the race. 
You need to ask yourself honestly, why are you not saying that about Donald Trump, who has behaved in a way that Joe Biden never behaved and is an embarrassment to his party and his family? It seems that there's such understanding for Donald Trump that we didn't give to a far more able and far more uh, uh, competent Joe Biden in the same three or four month period. So what is really motivating you to uh, support Trump? Is it his misogyny? Is it his racism? I mean, what's the real reason? Because it couldn't be age and coherence when you have a man sitting up, standing up on the stage, paying everybody from Pavarotti to rock and rollers, and he can't even dance. He just kind of weaves along. And that's your idea of a president? He can't even dance is perhaps the sickest burn you have ever offered on this program, Reverend Sharpton. Vaughn, you said something that I want to make sure we go back to, which is this idea that Republicans do have a message. They simply have someone top of the ticket who is not interested in staying disciplined and consistent on that message. I thought this reporting was interesting. Um, quote, Anna Kelly, a spokeswoman for the Republican National Committee, which is supporting the Trump campaign, said Mr. Trump's message is clear and consistent. President Trump's agenda for America's working men and women will fix our broken economy to lower costs and secure the border to make our community safe. I, I read that. Vaughn, and I say, okay, that is what they have tested in focus groups. That's what they have tested in polling. If we stay really focused on this messaging on border and the economy, there is a way for Republicans to win. Unfortunately for them, Donald Trump does not have that message consistency. And I wonder not only what it means for him, but Republicans down ticket who might be in down ballot, who might be in competitive races, who, who wish he was just sticking to that message. Right. I don't want to sidestep your question, Alicia, but I want to go to what you and Charlie were just talking about here. I think that this election and the next two weeks are going to say a lot about the way that America move, uh, views Donald Trump in the MAGA movement. To your point, right, Donald Trump, in ahead of the 2016 election, there was a little bit more of a focused message. And yet you have seen Donald Trump, in his opinion, thrive being off wholly who he is, unscripted, no teleprompter, off message, doing the weave. We saw this in the Republican primary, right? We saw him do very little campaigning. You know, the month before the Iowa caucus, he only was in Iowa five days compared to his competitors who spent nearly every single day in the state. And that came from hubris, a confidence in who he was is a politician. And right now, what you are looking at is somebody who sees himself ahead in a great many battleground states in polling, somebody who is confident, somebody who has not had to sit down for 60 minutes. He doesn't believe that he has suffered politically the consequences. He hasn't suffered in his mind political consequences for January 6th, outside of some criminal indictments. But for Donald Trump, he feels stronger than he ever has politically at this moment in time. And so for him, there is no need to stay on message script from his political advisors. Donald Trump is, in his mind, his best strategist, his best campaign manager, his most effective communicator. And who we are seeing up on the stage is the guy who believes that he can win the presidency doing exactly what he's doing right now.